Hello and welcome to another video on Back of the Nair. It's your number one AFC Bournemouth fan podcast YouTube channel. And I've got with me today Tony Funnel, and we're going to go through a news roundup. What's going on in the news this week in the world of AFC Bournemouth? Tony, how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Looking forward to it. Interesting week, Tony. Um, you know, I'm sure, like a lot of Bournemouth fans, we are on the edge of our seats waiting to see whether Bournemouth get a manager announced anytime soon. Jonathan Woodgate is going to be in charge for the game against QPR. It's been revealed today. So uh, nothing exciting there. But maybe, maybe there'll be a, somebody sitting in the crowd, Tony, watching the game. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're all surprised. We thought something would have happened already. Yeah, and there's a few names being touted about, and we will get onto them in a minute. Um, you and I haven't talked a lot about Jason Tindall, uh, really, since he left the football club. But this week, Jason has been, um, well, the last few weeks, he's been in the media quite a lot. Uh, Talk Sport seems to be his favourite radio station. Uh, and the football club released uh, to Chris Temple, good friend of the show, he, he put a little tweet out about this, that they were a little bit surprised about how much Tyndall's been talking. Obviously, when Eddie Howe left the club, it was quite a different different approach, wasn't it, Tone? Yeah, it's probably, it surprised me as well because he is quiet. So mm. I didn't expect to hear anything. No, maybe he's been advised to raise his media profile. It's a very difficult situation when a manager gets fired from a football club. Uh, I shouldn't. I don't think that word fired. No, Asterly. it's not very nice. That no, no, no. It's not the right word, really. But um, I do think he has got a point where he says they obviously were in the top four. Yeah. When um, they split company, he was in the top six. Mm. So he wasn't a million miles away from being a success, anyway, was he? Really? You know, no, we'll, we'll never know now. No. But they weren't in an awful position. Um, and even though we've got a good squad of players, he had to sell some good players, didn't he? And that must have been yeah. really disappointing. Yeah, it must have been really disappointing. And I, I think from a, from a fan's perspective, I suppose, um, we're expecting quite a lot. We're expecting quite a lot this season. Uh, but deputising of course coming in as the intro manager has been Jonathan Woodgate and he again he got another little win last night uh Tony in in the game did you watch the bit of the game yes I did yeah um another result which was good mm. um it was it it's a typical game where I think it's what you expect in the championship against teams they got on top of Bournemouth straight mm. away and they never let Bournemouth settle down and, and you could see a couple of the Bournemouth lads thinking, hang on a minute, I want a few more seconds on the ball. No, no, yeah. you ain't going to have it. We're going to close you down really quickly. And that's what has happened. And, it, you know, it does, it does stop you playing a bit because, you know, at the moment we're still not seeing the Bournemouth of yesteryear, are we really? Unfortunately not. No, and I think, you know, last night I was, I was listening to the, the free-for-all after the game, which Sam, Sam did. And I, I was on it for a briefly. I was listening to everyone afterwards and I... I sort of start to think to myself, maybe we won't. Maybe that's maybe we were spoiled when we were in this league before. You know, we went up to the championship, we came up from League One. Very different proposition for teams, I imagine, as a footballer, you know, playing a team that had just come from League One the season before to playing a team who's just come down from the Premier League. Maybe that might affect the way that you approach a game. Completely different squad of players, different manager. Maybe, maybe we just need to grind out the old. 1-0, and that's how Bournemouth get back up to the, to the Premier League. Maybe we won't, we won't see that free-flowing football that we no. saw. No, I don't think you will um, straight away. Definitely not. Um, obviously, we started the season. We played some good games. You know, last night, the goal was what we expect from Bournemouth. Mm. So, um, yeah, and to be fair, I don't think anyone would mind if they grind out some results. And we get in the playoffs and get through that that way. No one's going to worry, are they? As long as you're back in the Premiership. No, completely, completely. Uh, but there, obviously, the, there is a new manager awaiting. We're awaiting a new manager, potentially a new manager, or potentially not somebody new. Potentially, we're looking at somebody like that. Now, Jonathan Woodgate again. He, we just said that he got a good result 
But the media, a lot of the media, um, are ruling him out as a as a potential. But really, if you if you're winning games, Tony, is it riskier to twist or stick? I know it's a difficult position because, to be fair, everyone who's applied for the job, if you've got experience, then um, you will have you will have made mistakes in the past. So. You could turn around and say, oh, yeah, but when he was there, he didn't do very good. And then at the same time, when you've got no experience, people are turning around saying, well, but he hasn't done anything. He's only been a coach. He's never been a manager. But if you look back at all the top managers, um, they were coaches originally. You know, Harry Redknapp, he was a coach. Bournemouth gave him his chance. Mm. So you haven't got to have a vast amount of experience. And I mean, definitely Woodgate has got playing experience and uh, experience where he's played for top managers in top clubs. So, yeah, yeah, uh, everyone's got to have a chance. Yeah, he appears to know the league maybe yeah, a lot better than others. Another person's name who's still rattling about there, Tony, is this guy here, uh, David Wagner. Wagner, after check if he does come in, that we get his name right. Um, now, this guy, obviously, very much the messiah when it comes to being a Huddersfield fan. He got them promoted on a on a bit less of a budget than we've got. Right, uh, yeah. And, you know, arguably, players with less, um, what's the word, pedigree, I guess. Uh, he does have the experience of getting a team promoted. So if you are looking for somebody who wants to get a team promoted, then you surely that's got to be like one of the first boxes you want to tick, isn't it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's been there and he's done it before. So, yeah, yeah it, it's not an easy, you know, people look from the outside and think, oh, yeah, just go and pick a manager. It's easy. Why haven't we done it yet? But it's not as easy as you think. There's a lot of things you've got to, there's a lot of boxes you've got to tick before you get the right one. Yeah, completely. And sometimes you have to take a chance to get the right one. Yeah, you do. And that <laughs> leads us to, the third person, because it does look like a short list of three. I might be completely wrong, but you never know. Uh, and the, the final guy, Tony, Mr. Henri. Yeah. To be honest, odds on favourite I've seen, but I think it's a bit of a non-starter to me. I can't see Thierry Henri. There's a lot of talk that, that's really driven this up. And I had the feeling, uh, and I know I'm not the only one, I thought I thought Wagner had this job in the bag last week, and I and, and then suddenly Thierry Henry entered the the market at twenty to one, and now he's the favourite, uh, and that's in the space of a week. So uh, quite interesting there. Doesn't have championship experience, um, and managerial experience really. Not really. He hasn't done a great job of where he's been. So then I'm thinking to myself, okay, well maybe he's got people backing him in the media, but. Paul Merson doesn't think he's right for the job, and he's a big Henri fan. And even Arsene Wenger was surprised when asked uh, about Henri going there, so coming to Bournemouth. So that's a really curious thing. So he must be offering something, Tony, that we don't know about. That's it. It'd be interesting, very interesting. Um, obviously, it's it's Maxine Demin's money, and he'll do what he wants with it. But if the idea this season was to get up straight away, Maybe the maybe the plans change. What do you think, Tony? Huh? Yeah, if we're looking more long term, maybe they will go for a manager we didn't expect. It's yeah. typical, you know. I it's such a hard one because they've got they've got the potential to to get straight back up. The potential's there, so yeah. I don't know. I think like everyone, we're just thinking. What's going to happen? Which way? When are they going to sort something out? We've got to find out soon. Otherwise, you may as well just stick with Woodgate. If you, you know, if yeah. You, it's only a couple of months left. You know, just that's it. If you're that unsure, yeah. Jonathan Woodgate and Harry, and Harry, our oh, mate Harry. That do me. Yeah, we have to get him back on here, and he can tell us what he's thinking for each game. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Okay, well, that was our news roundup, and now we're going to move to our Super Six. Right, and here it is, Tony Funnel. That is our Super Six table there. 
Uh, going from 10th, there we've got Alan Rocket. God, he was at the top, wasn't he? Yes, he slipped back, unfortunately. He slipped back. Then we got yourself, Tony. Uh, Aiden there. Stephen Wheeler. He's yeah. gone past you again. Yeah, he got some good results. Mark Cole, Tyler Gregory Wareham, Lewis Curtis, Jamie Dawson, Zachary Modbridge, and at the top there, Brian Baxter. It's still very, very competitive, isn't it? It is. I'm still hanging on in that ninth place. You are. You are hanging on. Did you have a good week? How did it go for you this week? I had a nightmare um, Nightmare in Europe. I didn't get either result correct. Uh, and then I got 11 points from the uh, remaining four fixtures. Okay. Well, that's pretty good going, really. I mean, you, you sort of turned it round there. Yeah. Well, do you know what it's like? We was um, we was babysitting for our granddaughter, and I didn't have the football on. And then when it came to ten o'clock, I quickly look at my phone, and the first fixture white, second fixture white, and I thought, oh no, oh. I've had another bad midweek. Yeah. And then it was green two points, green two points, green two points, green five points. Brilliant. So eleven in the end, I got. That is good. That is good. Good turnaround like that. Uh, now, this week, Tony, we're back to kind of normal football action. It's, it's no European stuff here to try and work our work ourselves out with. We've got Burnley against West Brom. Not sure if it's going to be a classic. Yeah, well, I'm going to go for a home win for Burnley and I'm going 2-0. Two 2-0. Nil. Two nil. Sort of like- they didn't play, they played quite good against um, Fulham. Yeah, I couldn't couldn't put chances away. They had a lot of possession, so going for Burnley. Big Sam over at West Brom, isn't he? So it's um, I know, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting kind of life. Oh, look at that, Tom! Straight in early, QPR against AFC Bournemouth. What do you think might happen here? Yeah, QPR have had some good results recently, mm. um, but I'm going to do your favourite because I do think Bournemouth will beat them. I'm going. 2-1 Tony. 2-1 Tony. Woodgate's at the wheel. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, that 2-1 could get him the job. Oh, you know, it could do. They keep saying, people in the media keep saying he's ruled out, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, how can you if he keeps getting results? Right, uh, then we got Forrest against Blackburn. That's going to be uh, a good game, I imagine. Yeah, I'm going for an away win for Blackburn, 1-0. Okay, lovely. Moving across here. Ah, oh, there they are, Rotherham. Oh, now they've got a... I saw their run of games. I don't know if you saw it, but they've got a, a wicked run of games. Oh, Rotherham. I was say that. Yeah, they have. Yeah. But and they will feel confident, won't they, how they got on against Bournemouth? They will do, but I'm going to go for a 3-1 victory for Norwich. Do you know, it's quite interesting. I was thinking about in the, in the beginning of the season when sort of the transfer window was open. Norwich got a few players that have, who have were, sort of had championship experience. So, you know, it was able to them to kind of brighten up their their yeah. first team a little bit. Um, Bournemouth didn't get any many players with championship experience you know, over the last few transfer windows. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. You know, the, the type of football that you're used to playing, the league that you're used to playing in. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, it does happen. Okay, we've got Reading against Middlesbrough. Right. I'm going... Big result for Reading here. 2-0 Reading. 2-0 Reading. Back in the hunt, huh? Yep. And then uh, Huddersfield against Swansea. Yeah, I'm going 2-1 Tony again. 2 Swansea. No, I was going to say. Yeah. Oh, you threw me on that one. I've actually gone... This week, I've gone for... Three home wins and three away wins. Ah. And two two one Tonys. Two two one Tonys. Uh, and it's not going to be the second or the first minute for this. It's not going to be a two or a one. But what is your golden goal prediction going to be, Tony? I'm going four. Four. Fantastic. I went four as well. Oh, um, right. Do you want to change yours? <laughs> no, no. I'm happy with four. <laughs> Challenge, Jeff. Submit our entry. And that bit is done super duper well uh that's the super six done get your predictions in the bottom there 
for the bottom uh, at the bottom with the comments if you can uh, please do like and subscribe the gun you know the channel's going great and we want it to continue going great um, you know it's really good stuff and also who do you think is gonna be the next Bournemouth manager is it Woodgate is it Wagner or is it Vavavoom uh, you put your answers at the bottom there we'd love to know what you think what do you think Tony what's she gonna be a pick bring back Eddie bring back Eddie <laughs> I've said it all along yeah. yeah I don't know if he's watching if you're watching Ed I don't know what you're doing on Saturdays if you're busy yeah spice call me uh yeah <laughs> okay all right well that's it from us then uh back next week time we'll do more of this yeah back next week good luck to everyone in their fixtures this week and uh even better luck to me yeah all the luck to you tone definitely yeah. rocketing up that league anytime soon again okie dokie okie dokie uh, for me it's adios <laughs> and for me it's Adios too. Up the cherries. Bye-bye.